This week on Empowering Midlife Wellness, I'm talking about microdosing of semaglutide and terzepatide. These drugs that we commonly know now are very helpful for weight loss. Not for weight loss in this particular setting, but for treatment of diseases that are driven by inflammation. Let's learn about that today. Hi friends and welcome to this week's episode. If you're just joining me, I'm Dr. Susan. I'm a board certified gynecologist and certified menopause practitioner dedicated to taking care of women in midlife. That's women just like me who want to feel great now and also increase the chance that we'll be healthy as we get older because that starts right now. So today I wanna to talk to you about potentially using these very common weight loss drugs. We know now about semaglutide, which is also known as Ozempic or Wigovi, I'll remind you why in a minute, and Terzepatide, which is the generic name also known as Monjaro or Zepbound. Using those drugs not for weight loss, not for diabetes, those are the FDA approved indications, but for treatment of other inflammatory diseases. Because these molecules are so anti-inflammatory, they have been found to help with a lot of diseases that have inflammation as their root cause. Things like autoimmune disease. That's always because our immune system is ramped up. By definition, we're in a state of inflammation. Chronic pain sometimes. PCOS, that's a hormone imbalance that can lead to fertility problems in younger patients. Even mood issues. Reduction of Alzheimer's. Heart disease prevention many, many things that have inflammation perhaps as their root cause. So that whole line of thought is called microdosing of these so-called GLP-1 agonists. And that's a lot of tongue twister, but going back to what we were talking about regarding the names of these drugs, just as a reminder, semaglutide is the generic name and the FDA approved use of that compound for treatment of diabetes under the name Ozempic, and for weight loss under the name Wigovi. So confusing, I know, but all three of those things are the same. And then terzepatide is the generic name for what the FDA approved for diabetes under the name Monjaro, and for weight loss under the name Zepbound. So it all gets kind of confusing <laughs> that each of these drugs has three different names for the same thing. So when we're talking about those brand name drugs, those are FDA approved for treatment of diabetes and weight loss, and that's it. And the dosing protocol for that particular disease treatment is very clearly spelled out. And I'm just gonna stick with semaglutide today because most of the anecdotal studies looking at reduction in the diseases that are driven by inflammation are looking at semaglutide in approximately one tenth to one fifth of the standard dose that would be used for weight loss. So because the FDA approved certain doses and you can buy those at the pharmacy under prescription, those doses are completely different. So when we're talking about microdosing semaglutide, we're by nature talking about a compounded product. So again, because the FDA only approved certain doses, you cannot get microdoses of semaglutide from your pharmacy not from your regular pharmacy, under brand name, they have to come from a compounding pharmacy. So nothing wrong with that. We use compounded semaglutide for weight loss as well. Now there are not any big peer reviewed studies that prove that this works. However, sometimes as evidence is arising, we have to kind of use our common sense and go with this abundance of data that really suggests that this can work. These molecules are anti-inflammatory. For example, semaglutide is a peptide. That just means it's a short chain of amino acids, not long enough to be called a protein. Naturally occurring in our own body. So it's made in our gut. We make it ourselves. Some people make less. Perhaps that's why they have more problems than those who do not struggle with sugar control, inflammation, or weight gain. We, we don't know. However, we do make it in our own body and giving small amounts, again, not studied, but one fifth to one tenth of the amount that works for weight loss can really improve inflammatory conditions. So we talked about already autoimmune disease. Now in that case, for example, if you had 
Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's disease, any number of autoimmune conditions, we could follow your symptoms. There would be a marker that we could use to follow whether the microdosing protocol was working. Uh, sometimes patients with autoimmune conditions have a, a measurement of the amount of antibody present in their blood, and we might see a reduction in that antibody. We might also see a reduction in inflammatory markers, like C-reactive protein. That's a very commonly measured inflammatory marker. So there are ways that we can see if this is working. Primarily, does the patient feel better? So if you have one of these diseases, it's very safe to give this a try. Now, when we're talking about trying things that have not been studied, of course, safety is the first thing that comes to mind, right? Because we, we don't have good studies proving that this works. However, we have a lot of good studies on five or 10 times the dose being safe. So suffice to say, at a much lower dose, I think it's very common sense to say that it's very safe to try this if you wanted to, and many patients experience an enormous benefit. Okay, so we've talked about autoimmune disease, and I would definitely consider trying that if I were a patient who was otherwise considering drugs like steroids or methotrexate or other much more harmful drugs. So again, these are naturally occurring molecules, potentially completely harmless, that could be very beneficial. And at what dose? That's a good question. Because anecdotal studies have looked at one-fifth to one-tenth of the weight loss dose, something like that. So you need to see a physician who's willing to work with you, understanding that it's a little bit of a try-and-see approach. So in our office, what we would do is start at one-fifth of the standard dose of semaglutide that we would use to start a weight loss program. For example, for weight loss, we would typically start with 0.25 milligrams once a week of semaglutide injected under the skin. The patient would self-administer, and then we would usually double it every week up to two milligrams. So it could go up eight times depending on how the patient's doing, her results, how she's feeling. Now in a microdosing protocol, in our office we would start with one-fifth of that. So doing that math, instead of 0.25 milligrams, we're giving 0.05 milligrams. And we're not increasing it every week. In fact, we would give that dose for four weeks in a row. And if the patient is experiencing benefit without symptoms, we might just keep it there. On the other hand, if she's experienced a little bit of benefit, but not as much as she's hoping, at that point, we would double it. Now, not for four weeks, so completely different protocol than for weight loss. And again, after a month, we might double it again, but at no point would we get to the dose that we would even start with for a weight loss patient. So we do not see weight loss when patients are given these micro doses of semaglutide. In fact, if we did see weight loss, it might only be because the patient is reducing inflammation and inflammation can stimulate weight gain. But if she's experiencing a significant loss of appetite or other symptoms like nausea, GI distress, then we'd back off on the dose. So a very different protocol, even though there's no study that says this is the right protocol. This is a commonly used protocol, one that we use in our office that's been quite successful. So what else could it help with? Well, if you have a product that's safe and is shown to be anti-inflammatory, of course, obvious things like autoimmune disease, well, that makes sense. Well, inflammation is the root of many diseases. For example, it can help with potentially, no studies have said this yet, but potentially reducing neuroinflammation that could increase the risk of dementia, inflammation of the heart that can increase the risk of heart disease. And now there have been studies showing that these GLP-1 agonist drugs do reduce the risk of heart disease. Now, that gets a little confusing because if patients are losing weight, of course, it's going to reduce their risk of heart disease. But it seems that independent of weight loss, those drugs do reduce the risk of heart disease. And perhaps it's through this anti-inflammatory pathway. Diabetes, all kinds of chronic pain that we have no particular etiology for, numerous different things could be helped. Now, if you're a patient who has had blood work done and you have an elevated inflammatory marker, for example, highly sensitive CRP or C-reactive protein. That's a non-specific inflammatory marker, but it shows us there's inflammation going on in your body from something. So that would be something that we could follow. If we've got inflammation present, 
we want to reduce it. Now, is it just using a drug and telling you to go off, try it and go on your way? No, of, of course not. Because inflammation and the diseases that result from inflammation often need to be treated with a change in lifestyle. So this is not just, again, taking the drug and off you go, but also incorporating healthy nutrition, getting rid of processed food, reducing sugar, increasing protein, fiber, vegetables, sounds like a broken record, exercise, including resistance training. Again, sounds like a broken record, but in the context of eating well, exercising, sleeping well, reducing emotional stress, maybe you've done all those things and you have rheumatoid arthritis or lupus and you're still experiencing symptoms, that's when this microdosing protocol could be something to consider. So looking all over the internet for all of the studies that support the use of this microdosing protocol, we're not gonna find much yet, but because it's been helpful to so many patients, and this is on the cutting edge of medicine that eventually will result in some very large studies, I'm pretty sure, proving that this works, in our office, using it very carefully, as I have described, sounds like a really good idea. So if you are a patient with one of these diseases, autoimmune disease, an elevated CRP for reasons we don't know, maybe you've got a very high risk of heart disease or Alzheimer's in your family, also other diseases like depression and anxiety have been helped with microdoses of semaglutide. So not unsafe to try. So at the current moment, I think it's a really good idea to consider if you have a doctor who's willing to work with you and do something like what I'm talking about, starting at one fifth of the semaglutide weight loss dose for a month, that would be 0.05 milligrams weekly for a month and then slowly going up on it, working really closely with you to see how your symptoms are changing and then measuring any markers that could be helpful. Like for example, if you have a high CRP, seeing if it comes down. If you have a measurable amount of any auto antibody, seeing if it comes down. So there can be ways that we can document that it's working as well as asking you how you're feeling, which is most important. So if you've had rheumatoid arthritis and had pain in your hands for 10 years and you start on a microdose of semaglutide and your pain goes away, I'm okay with assuming that it's safe to continue on that. Now, do we have a trial proving that it wasn't just chance that that happened or that there's no control group to prove that it wasn't just a placebo effect. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter because it's very safe. Again, these drugs have been studied, numerous studies looking at semaglutide and terzepatide at much higher doses. And the safety is excellent for both of those at much higher doses. So stands to reason that lower dose is going to be even safer. So if you are interested in microdosing semaglutide, let us know. We are offering that at our office using the protocol that I described. Now we would only want to treat you if you have one of those particular indications that I mentioned. But if you do, let us know and we can help you or you can pass on this information from this video or from many others that are out there to your own physician and ask if they will do this for you. And then really important not to just take the drug by itself, but to incorporate healthy lifestyle because the root of inflammation often is lifestyle, food, exercise, sleep, stress, all those same things. So try those first. And if you're still experiencing symptoms from inflammation, this is definitely something to consider. And it's certainly something I would personally take if I had those issues. So I hope this was helpful today. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And I can't wait to see you next week. Mm -hmm.